Hey, it's Tate Morgan again. Welcome to episode three uh, of our build series where we're putting together a off-road rat rod we're building out of a $200 Ranger and some old Model A skins. Um, so first episode, we went and kind of talked about what the Gambler is. Second episode, we went through and used a bunch of Seafoam products to make sure the engine's running right and running smooth because uh, it's a 200,000 mile piece of junk. <laughs> oh, crap. For episode three, I wanted to do a little bit of a walk around and do what the anatomy of a gamble car actually is. So behind me are a few of my gamble cars and this one in particular is near and dear uh, to my heart because it is a 2001 Toyota Corolla. Um, it's basically what the Gambler 500 started out as. Uh, old commuter cars, um, high miles, uh, and then taking them off road in places they really shouldn't be. So while you'll see some of these rigs have evolved, have big tires and big weird nasty stuff, um, you know, that's what uh, gets views on the grams, as the kids say. Uh, this is what's fun about the Gambler. This is what makes the Gambler the most approachable motorsport in the world. So as you can see, this particular one, uh, I picked up with some front end damage. And I like rigs with front end damage because that means it was running and it wasn't someone's you know, headache to try to pass off onto you. So this is a great running car. Best thing is um, it's a five speed manual and it's got the, uh, the VVTi 1.8 in it, uh, which you know, is not making a ton of horsepower at about 140, but you know, for this size of car and for the dirt, it does just fine. So this one really hasn't had anything done to it. It came with snow tires, which I guess may help it a little bit in the gravel, but at the end of the day, you know, this isn't the Baja, you know, 1000. Um, the more impractical the vehicle is, the more fun you're gonna have, uh, and the more challenging it's gonna be. I love Toyota Corollas. Um, they're absolutely indestructible. You can pick them up cheap every single day. Um, they're amazing rigs. This for me, um, probably my choice if I was gonna take anything out of here, out for a Gamma 500. Now, let's walk over and look at something a little different. This, is our 1991 Mazda Miata. And this was probably the beginning of what we now call hater class. And what that is, is when you show up to a game of 500 and someone says, hey, that didn't cost $500. Well, at the end of the day, it's not a race. And so you can't cheat by spending more money because whoever wins has the crappiest car or is the best person. So at the end of the day, if you want to build something that's really cool that you've always wanted and you want to use the gambler to justify that, Let's do it, man. So I originally bought the Miata with the intention of just finding some old mud tires, cutting out the fenders and putting them on there and ma basically making our version of what a Gambler Miata is. There are quite a bit of them on the Gambler. D to be honest with you, at the Gambler in Oregon, it wouldn't be uncommon to see about a dozen of these. But not quite like this. This one's got a set of long travel A-arms, front and rear, uh, made by Paco Motorsports. Um, it's a small kind of boutique uh, Miata parts maker. Um, and uh, they were so cool to hook us up with them, along with some AFCO shocks and some super swampers. We bent up a fully custom cage. I know, you're like, why hasn't he talked about the wheels yet? These are 14 inch. McCool wire wheels wrapped in uh, 28 by 85 uh, Interco Super Swamp. It came with a stock 1.6. Um, unfortunately, we lost compression on it and we found a Junkyard 1.8 to swap into it. It's got full custom bumper and skid plates. Went ahead and swapped in some lower gears in the diff as well as had to add custom half shafts in the rear end to accommodate for the width. Okay, uh, this is a very special car to me. Um, while it was purchased for close to $500, probably $800, I know it's just hard to find a Miata for that much these days. Uh, it's got 225,000 miles on it. It really stank, the top leaked. Um, it, was a, it was a wreck. So it fits in the parameters for that perspective. And so per the rules, it's allowable, but there's a bunch of money and cool stuff soaked into the suspension uh, and the roll cage and all that stuff. And um, we did that for my good friend, Jessie Combs. Uh, some of you may know her. She is actually the uh, fastest woman on four wheels um, in the Guinness record book. And then she was on um, Extreme 4x4. She was on Mythbusters for a season. Uh, she raced Baja. She raced King of the Hammers. Uh, she raced everything. And she was bringing her show the list to come do the Gambler 500. And she asked me to prep a car for her. You may notice a couple stickers on here. Say Jesse Combs. 
one of which is over here, which is made special by her foundation. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, uh, Jessie unfortunately uh, left us when she was actually breaking the land speed, the woman's land speed record down the Elbor Desert. Um, and these stickers right here are sold by the Jesse Combs Foundation. Uh, you can find them on their website and uh, all that money goes towards um, finding opportunities for women to go out and race and uh, be involved in motorsports. So it's, it's a foundation that we support and we wholeheartedly uh, hope you look into it, uh, especially if you have women that are interested in getting into motorsports and cool stuff like this. Something we figured out that just normal old passenger cars make up about 90% of the Gambler 500. But really what's so interesting about stock passenger cars? Which brings us to this. Now again, this is something I purchased probably about 15 years ago with a salvage title uh, for about 800 bucks and um, bone stock at the time. Now it's a little different. Okay, first things first, these tires. These are Interco IROC 49 by 21 by 17. They are massive, they're loud, and um, they're silly. So yes, these are built one ton axles. They have all Kermali internals. They are locked with Grizzly lockers front and rear, but what you may not notice at first is this thing on all four corners. And those are Axle Tech portal boxes. This thing has about 27 to 28 inches of clearance from the bottom of the tube to the ground. Basically, I can drive over anything. I personally built the roll cage. Don't get too close to those welds. Some home-built sliders. Of course, custom paint job. You'll probably also notice this. And this is something that has Land Cruiser owners in a tizzy. The thing is, when you're going off-road, being tall is bad. But a lot of times you need to be tall to fit big tires under it. So although we have the portal boxes, we needed to fit these massive tires and not be a giant monster truck because then we can't even go on the trails that we want to go on anymore. So we kept it low, but instead decided to sacrifice some of the sheet metal. There's no need for this. To be honest with you, these tires are too big. Uh, it can't go over like 40 miles an hour because the whole thing starts to shake. There's no reason to build a truck this big. It really is the inspiration for why stockish cars are more fun. And so, if everything that comes, well, for the most part, everything comes out as a Corolla. Some may come out as a more milder build or crazy build. We're not gonna say no to anybody. Something that we do have quite a bit of is what we call the search and rescue. It really is one of the most asked questions. What happens if my car breaks down? We rely on you and your friends to help each other out. And therein lies a big opportunity for fun. Because a lot of people have Jeeps and trucks and everything, they don't have room in the driveway to put another car, but they spend all this time building this cool truck or this Jeep or, or a SUV or whatever it is, and they want to go out and have fun with their friends, but then also support them. So they're out there in a Cadillac or a minivan, they break down, and your buddy's right behind you with water and tools and everything to you know, keep you safe, keep you fed, get you towed out, and this is mine. I guarantee you, if you've got an old Corolla or a minivan sitting in the backyard, that's the ticket. Don't worry about big tires or big lifts or suspensions. You know, the most fun, something like this. So thanks for tuning in. Next episode, we're gonna be back in the shop, uh, starting to work on the Rat Rod Ranger again and uh, getting some tube bent up and getting some sheet metal cut and all sorts of fun stuff.